Now all the programs we've looked at so far have just been one long list of instructions and the execution starts at the top and works its way down. As your programs get longer then what you might want to do is break them down into functions and procedures. Functions and procedures are both blocks of code that you can use throughout your program and indeed export and use in other programs. And the difference between a function and a procedure is just that a function will perform an action and give you a response, so an answer effectively, whereas a procedure will just perform an action. So the only difference is whether something gets passed back or not. They're both created in the same way, well certainly in Python. Some programming languages um, have different keywords for creating them. Uh, it's def, which is short for define, and then you give it a, the name. So I'm going to just create a procedure here that says hello. Um, so we ha have hello, and then we have um, the brackets. Now the brackets are required even if you're um, not passing uh, what we call an argument. So an argument goes inside the brackets, and that's um, some extra information that you might be passing to the function or procedure. So if you think about the standard uh, keywords in Python, things like print, inside the brackets for the print keyword, you pass it the text that you want it to print, uh, and that's called an argument. So in this case, we're not going to have um, anything there. We're just going to literally just print the word hello. So that's my procedure defined. If I want to run this procedure, I just need to use its name. So I'm going to call it hello. Now some programming languages require you to define the functional procedure above the point in the program where you actually call it, um, but uh, others are less fussy. So uh, but here, that's the convention I'm going to stick with. So I've defined it at the top, but I've called it here. So just defining it won't actually run that. So if I and just delete that line of code, for example, if I run this program on its own, it'll look like it doesn't, it doesn't really do anything. Although if I um, call it by name from here, it will actually run that program. Um, but obviously, if I want to run it from my main program here, I'm going to uh, I'll just run it hello like so so that when I run that line of code there it'll run my procedure up here so that's not a particularly good um, program really because it's actually longer than just printing hello but imagine I wanted to uh, perform some sort of action uh, throughout my program then I might save some code um, by doing this so for example if I wanted to uh, work out whether a number was odd or even and I wanted to do that at multiple points throughout my program instead of writing all the code to do that at every point throughout the program I would just include uh, my function at the top to work out whether the number was odd or even and then I would call that from different points within my program so let's have a look at how we would do that particular one so the first thing when you when you're creating um, a function the first thing to think about is what to call it and what you would call it might depend on how you're going to use it. So what's the answer going to be when I ask it if this number is odd or even? So if I want to know whether a number is odd or even, what, what, what could it pass back? So it could pass back the word odd or even, but that might be a little bit tricky to process and then getting a word and the different lengths and things. So I might be better off actually just wanting to know whether it's odd and passing back whether that's true or false and if I know that it's if it's not odd then it must be even and vice versa so I might call my function for example is odd okay and what I'm going to return is true or false so how can we tell whether um, a number is odd or even well there's a variety of different ways of doing it so you could use um, modular arithmetic you could use bitwise logic you could use um, integer, di integer division so you'd know that a number is odd for example if you divide it by two and you don't get a whole number then um, you know that that's an odd number so I'm going to use um, I'm going to use modular arithmetic so modular arithmetic is uh, a division, but we're looking at the remainder. So if I take that number, 
And in fact, what we need to do is we need to have a number that we're actually going to check. So in this case, I'm going to take an argument. So I'm going to take an argument called number, and I want to check whether that, if we divide that by two, so number divided by two, so I'm going to use the modular arithmetic symbol, so that will divide by two and give me the remainder. So if that is one, then I know that it's an odd number. Okay, now this comparison here with the doubles equal sign, what is that? That is asking whether number divided by two, whether the remainder is equal to one. So that whole expression that I've highlighted there will return true or false. So I could actually just return that. So if I put that in brackets just for clarity, if I return that, that will return a true or false because either that is equal to one or it isn't. Okay, so if I want to use this now, so return just passes the value back. To use a function, which this is because it's returning a value rather than a procedure, we need something to catch the answer as it comes back. So we could either set it as a variable, so we could say answer equals is odd um, you know, 3, uh, for example, and that will store that value, or we could just print it. So we could we could print uh, answer, and that will tell us. So if I run this now, it will say true. Um, but what we could do is we could just we don't have to store that value. We could as long as we use it somehow. So we can print it, for example. Um, that's fine. And if I pick a different number, so if I say two, it will say false, and obviously um, any other number. So if I say five it will say that it's true. So that's a fairly simple function to tell me whether a number is odd or even. Obviously functions can be as simple uh, or complex as you like. Usually they would just do a single thing. So calculating whether a number is a prime number, for example, would be something you could quite uh, straightforwardly do. Or you could create, um, sometimes I create uh, a function to validate input. So if you want to do, if you want to validate input at multiple instances throughout your program, rather than using input lots of times and then working out whether it's the answer is right, you can just create your own function which inputs a number and validates it. So um, that's another option. So, but once you've created your function, you can then call it as many times as you like. So, for example, um, if I then wanted to do this, I could say for n in um, if I could type n in range 10 so I'm only counting up to 10 but this could be as many times as I liked um, and I, if I print the result of is odd n we can see that obviously it's going to alternate isn't it so um, the 0 isn't uh, odd but 1 is 2 isn't 3 is etc so that's uh, not particularly useful example, but if that did something more complex, we could see that that would be a saving rather than having to put all of that code at every point in the program where we wanted to check, um, for example, whether a number was odd, and um, that's that's giving us that, that benefit of not having to do that. It also makes the program easier to read because if we'd have had um, that line of code where this one is, it wouldn't have been as obvious what the program did as just looking at that and say we can look at that and say oh yes well that's just printing whether the number's odd or not so in a way it makes your number your program um, more readable as well